Okay, good morning. Uh, can you please introduce yourself? So my name is Patara. I'm a singer songwriter from Thailand, from Bangkok, Thailand. Okay. And what is your first memory? My first memory that would probably be back when I was four years old, when I was still a toddler. Back then, I was one of the most picky eater ever. I would only eat rice drenched in maki sauce or ketchup because I wouldn't eat anything else. And looking back to it, it just goes to show that back then I was pretty close minded and I only wanted to just really stay in the comfort zone and just getting those flavors that I'm familiar with. But years and years afterwards, I've grown to become a foodie and just literally eat everything that is in front of my face. Like right now, I have no problems like eating goat or um, goat brain. They actually taste pretty good. I'm just gonna be straight and upfront on this. But what I learned, I guess I would put this as, you know, the main, like, I would say that it's like a key theme of my life is that to be open-minded. Back then I wasn't open-minded. And once I came to that um, turning point, then I just went, okay, why not try those things out? And once I opened my mind, I, I've been able to explore different shades of food. Mm -hmm. Great. Do you remember how, how you were introduced to like ketchup and maki sauce? Is that, is that a part of your regular family cuisine or? Not much. It was more of my childhood's commodity. Mm -hmm. um, I just remember liking them the most out of everything. But since back then when I got stuck to certain things, I would be hooked onto those real bad and I wouldn't open myself to other things. But then later in life, I found that to be, I, I wouldn't want to say problematic, but in order for someone to grow, it's all about getting out of the comfort zone and just really opening up your mind and try new things, which I wasn't willing to do it back then because I felt that it was those were the things that I felt comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Great. So what is your first musical memory? My first musical memory would be being forced to sit down on a piano. Stereotypically Asian, I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's what we are. How, how old were you? I was four years old. And what do you remember about it other than just having to sit there? It was a part of my, one of my first piano you know, lessons. My mom made me take those lessons as a kid and I initially didn't enjoy it. So it felt daunting back then. Mm -hmm. I remember the feeling at that time that I went, why did I have to do this? I didn't really enjoy it. I enjoy making sounds, but I didn't enjoy being forced to sit in front of the piano. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your teacher? Um, she was a kind lady. She was trying to get a gist of where I was coming from, but I was too young and there was a lot of miscommunication. So it didn't really came, it didn't really come through. So that, um, the lesson chronicle fell short quickly. Okay. And uh, miscommunication is an interesting word to use. Like how, how can, do you have an example of miscommunication at, at that age? For example, like I said, I was enjoying experimenting. I was enjoying the fact that I was making sounds, especially from the keyboards and especially when 
back then when I was still a kid and I was still intrigued with the piano, it was still new to me. But then I just didn't like the fact that I was forced to sit in front of the piano for the fact being that it was a lesson. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed making sounds from it, but I just didn't like the fact that it was a lesson. Great. So what music did you grow up listening to? A lot, a lot, actually. But as far as I can remember, I did listen to everything from J-pop, K-pop, like Ayumi Hamazaki or Dongbang Shingi, um, a little bit of Mariah Carey here and there, Brian McKnight, but these came afterwards. I started with just really the musics of the um, of Asia, like K-pop, J-pop, Ayumi Hamazaki, um, a bunch of Thai artists. Mm -hmm. um, so did your family have a large collection or were you listening on the radio? Or mm -hmm. how, how, how do you access this music? It would be mainly through my parents. Mm -hmm. With my mom, with my mother, back at the time, it would be more of a mainstream. So back in 2000, to 2001, early 2000s, she would play me Cheryl Crow's, Michelle Branch from one of those greatest hits from the 2000s, while my dad would be blasting Electric Light Orchestra, Beatles, and sometimes Elton John when he would be driving me back and forth from school. Mm -hmm. So I did grow up with an eclectic, um, an eclectic range of music. Okay. How, how, do you, um, how did they came to their musical taste? Do you know? With my mother, before I was born, she used to play a lot of piano. And with my father, before I was born, when he was still in his, I think, late 20s, he was one of those people that worked in a club and was basically responsible for cueing the songs for the DJ when back then it was all vinyl. Okay, great. Can, can you say more about the club? Um, there's not a lot of detail that I can remember from the club, but I, as far as I can remember from him telling me, it was that it was mainly disco. So when he was cueing those songs, it would be artists like Bee Gees, Chick, just really Western playlist. Mm -hmm. But what was different back then was that there weren't any digital screens and it was just when you have to switch from another vinyl to another vinyl, from mm -hmm. another artist to the other one, then it would mean that you just have to switch the vinyl on the spot. Mm -hmm. Great. What do you remember liking about the music that you grew up with? What well, were you drawn to? Extra, that was the band that right now I can fully say that it's one of the bands that I've drawn to the most. And I remember the grooviness. I remember the just those intricate chords that thinking back right now, it has actually influenced a lot in terms of my music writing and just me striving to do something different mm -hmm. with how I write the harmonies to my songs. Great. And any other music that sticks in, in your head? Sorry, come again. Any other music, any other bands uh, stick in your mind as, as being very influential from this period? From back then, there wasn't a lot. It was more of just me exploring a bunch of things that I would hear on my day-to-day -day life. I didn't really start taking music seriously until I was 
around nine or ten, that was when I started listening to more of Mariah Carey, Pharrell Williams, and just really venturing into more R&B and just listening to more music in general. But back then, I do remember great things about those artists that I've been exposed through my parents. Mm -hmm. And, and what drew you to R&B when you were nine or 10? It was through a Mariah Carey CD called Emancipation of Mimi. I was listening to it and I went, wow, how can she rip like that? And I just went, okay, I got to train myself. I got to shoot my shot and see what happens and just really started practicing one of those riffs from her album. Mm -hmm. Great. So how, how did this training begin? I, I presumably not at piano lessons. No, no. <laughs> so basically, I stopped going to piano lessons immediately after that mishap. And then from five years, um, five years old onwards, I started training myself as in I would play those songs that I like by ears. It could be one of those Thai songs from this popular band that I remember. That band is called Potato. There's another band called Body Slam. I would listen to those songs repeatedly and figure out the chords as I go along. Mm -hmm. Were you also getting any music training in school? It didn't really happen until I was in my sixth grade. Okay. And what, back, what? It was awful fun. It was all like by ears. But um, when I was in seventh grade, that was the time when I was introduced to my mother's friend who also teaches conducting and linguistics at this Thai university called Chulalongkorn. Mm -hmm. And before that, I was pretty much self-teaching. Um, I was pretty much learning the piano by myself, but until I was 12, that was when after meeting with my mother's friend, that was when I started taking things seriously. That was when I came to an epiphany that I should be taking singing seriously because I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. Looking back to it, there were several occasions that I would show up to one of those adult relative slash family friends function and I would get up on the karaoke booth and started harmonizing. Great. It was when my parents went, oh yeah, he's got game. Then I didn't really, I wasn't really aware of it until I was 12. Then that was when my gut feeling was telling me that, hey, I should, um, this is what I enjoy doing. I should take it further. Mm -hmm. So your parents went to karaoke all the time? No, no, but it was one of those um, few family functions that opened my eyes. Okay, great. Um, so can you talk a bit about your training after you became serious with music? All right. So I started taking classical music lessons and when I was in seventh grade, then I was moving from another international school to the other one. And up until I was, up until I finished my high school, I was doing a lot of classical training. I would be in choirs. I would be singing a lot of opera numbers, a lot. 
I was owing to my mother's friend that outside of my school commitments, like my school choirs, then I would be attending choir rehearsals for the ones that are outside of school that my singing teacher hooked me up with. There was a time that I would be performing Messiah with the whole choir that my singing teacher, my mother's friend, was mm -hmm. directing for two or three years straight. Great. So it was a lot of classical repertoire that I had been exposed to. That was the case until I was in my first year in college. That was when I came to another realization that I actually enjoy doing R&B more. Mm -hmm. So did, did you enjoy doing classical music uh, or was it sort of just something you, you had to do or? It didn't feel like an obligation per se, but it just became clear to me that I wanted to do something that involved procreating, writing my own lyrics and being able to step outside of the box. But that's not to discredit any aspects of classical music because I feel that from growing up with being heavily exposed to those, it really did help building a strong foundation in terms of my vocal techniques and my vocal placement and just overall ensuring that I'm not gonna mess up my voice as I go along because those were pretty important in terms of how do you project your voice, how do you sing and keep your vocal health maintained. Mm -hmm. Were you also writing music uh, when you were a teenager? Not until I was in my second year in, co um, in college. Mm 